How's everyone doing? Good. How are you? Not bad. You guys have a good Memorial Day weekend? Of course. And you? Not bad at all. It is good to be back. Mark my words, this lecture is going to save lives. I'm amazed at how much of this mold is an issue. and I'm amazed at how much of this is being missed on many patients. My goal of this lecture is to wake up the world to this topic of mold and show you the health problems associated with it. Following tonight's lecture, I got a little Q&A for, for those of you who have come out. Um, I'm hoping my special guest comes, John from Mold Pro, may be here to help answer some questions for you guys as well. And I had the patient who inspired me to do this lecture here tonight. Some of the health problems you guys are dealing with are right in front of you in your mouth. This documentary was pulled from Netflix, Root Cause. This will make you question further root canals or even the root canals you possibly have in your mouth. I met with a holistic dentist in Ann Arbor about two, three weeks ago. Dr. Keith DeBrocki, I'm going to be networking with him a lot more. He says every single tooth he pulls that's a root canal tooth and sends to the MD Anderson Cancer Clinic, 100% of those root canal teeth contain one or multiple bacterial components to them. These are dead teeth that hold bacteria, may be trickling bacteria into the bloodstream. I just came across a research article earlier this week talking about strep bacteria in the mouth being contributing factors for stroke patients. Breaking toxic habits. This is gonna be a fun lecture. Patients who have been following me on my Instagram, I did it. I do some Instagram story themes throughout the week. The one week I did this one, patients really seem to love it. So I'm going to tackle this in a full-on lecture, talking about neurotransmitters and addiction issues. I'm tackling everything from the pills to the alcohol to other medications, you name it, sugar, whatever. We're tackling it all. Biotics Research had their first functional medicine uh, seminar a few weeks back. Dr. Tent and I went to it. It was pretty good. It was, it was, we had a real good time, flew down, and we were able to check out the Biotics uh, Research facility. We flew down there. We got all gowned up to go check out their uh, facility in the back. I was hoping to get more pictures in the background. They didn't allow us to get as many pictures as I wanted. I told him I was going to harass him a little bit at my lecture tonight. He travels with a purse. He'll call it, he'll call it a satchel, but it, that's a purse. He gives me crap about eating all these salads at work, so I had to get a picture of him, him eating a salad. So <clears throat> he's a very picky eater, worse than my toddler, so I had to give him some harassment on this lecture. We had a great time going down to Texas. And I got some cool things in the works, hopefully for next year, February. Uh, we're going to possibly be traveling out west for a summer. I'm trying to make some other things work. I just got to connect with another doctor out that way. And if it happens, California, here we come is all I'm going to say. <coughs> Biotics Research, this is uh, a picture behind the scenes. This is what their facility looks like. I want to get more, but they really wouldn't let me get anything more. I hope you guys are taking quality supplements. This is a patient in her mid thirties who came to see me for back issues. You could see what a whole, you know, a non food based vitamin is going to do a synthetic vitamin that's going right through you. You could see some of the stuff on x-rays. I saw this on her x-rays. You could follow us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. We are everywhere. Patients have loved the personalization that I have done as far as my Instagram stuff. I'll do an Instagram thing most weeks. If you know, I got a little story going, it's highlighted. You could click it, check out what I'm putting. I do. I go live every Friday for you know five to seven, seven minutes at a time. Patients have been enjoying it, so I continue to do it. I've got a blog. If you like to read stuff, follow the blog. 
We work very hard for patients. This is our team. This is our office. We are diligent and we work hard and we dig deeper for patients with any and all health problems. If you've had a good response and results with us, we'd like to hear it. This mother and her daughter have been delightful patients. I've treated them over the last few years. Her daughter had one of the famous little atlas cases. Her left eye, you can see, kind of turning inwards. After her atlas adjustment, it's back to normal. That C1 atlas, if it gets pinched up on that brain stem, that eye will turn inwards or could turn outwards. She just messaged me two weeks ago, very ecstatic, because the doctor doesn't want to do surgery on her eye anymore. He's pretty impressed with how her eyes have normalized out. They were scheduled to do surgery on her daughter. Real chiropractic. We will Skype with you if you'd like to Skype with us. We've got patients and family that are out of state and want to tackle their health issues. We'd be glad to address that. And I figured I'd start with one that is a mold-based patient. This is a 46-year-old lady down in Texas. Chest pains, two to three weeks, pain down the left arm, occasionally right arm, quick, sharp pains, pressure, maybe in the lymph node areas, uh, hands get ice cold. Down in Texas, humidity's a lot worse than in Michigan. Mold needs 40, 50% humidity to grow. They're gonna have more of a mold issue down south than what we deal with typically in Michigan, just because of that small factor. She had chest pain issues that I thought were possibly heart issues. I put her on enzymes to go after heart issues with her. Her chest pain completely disappeared with these enzymes I put her on. And I ran clotting factors on her to look at heart factors for her. Her heart factors were perfectly fine. These enzymes decreased inflammation on her that were, was caused by the mold and got rid of her chest pain that I thought was heart issues. Some of this mold stuff mimics heart issues in patients and also can contribute to certain factors with that, which I'll explain in a few slides. This was my cheap $60 basic mold panel I ran with her. And you can see some of her factors elevated. I'll explain why I run this panel and expand a bit more on it. This was a picture of her condo down in Texas, a little bit of a blurry photo, but you can see the mold from her HVAC system. She was being exposed to mold in her condo as well as her dance studio. She sent me an email Saturday, May 11. Dr. Jeff, I just want to let you know, taking Lysine Forte before bed, and then in the morning, along with FC Settle, has truly been a game changer, game changer for my brain functioning. It's helped me get a lot back of what I lost from dealing from the mold. In 2017, I had to withdraw from college courses just one day before the semester started because I couldn't concentrate and I was having dyslexic moments due to the mold. The previous semester, I got 4.0 and I was hoping to continue with my studies. One year later, although I moved to a brand new place, I still struggled with my brain in the morning, was really moody and had a lot of negative thoughts. Thank you so much for helping me achieve victory over mold. It was pretty cool. She wanted me to add in on this lecture with this email, pets can be affected by the air quality as well and supplements could help them too. Check your HVAC system at work and anyone in Dallas-Fort Worth, Texas area where she lives. <laughs> now, getting back to this mold and its heart issue, I'm gonna skip ahead of myself a little bit. In some patients being exposed to mold, patients build up antibodies to cardiolipin factors in their body, which can tr contribute to blood uh, uh, strokes, heart attacks, uh, embolisms, those types of things. Renaud's issues in the hands with patients. I have a patient whose husband was 42 years old, worked at this RV place in Novi. They had a water damaged unit come in that was severely demolished with black mold and just really toxic. 
They should have condemned the thing, working on it and cleaning. He was one of the unfortunate ones that got picked to clean this thing out. 42 years old, after working on this thing, passed away unusually. Had some type of heart episode, they said. Everyone working there, kind of something happened. We know it's something he was exposed to here. Knowing what I know now and seeing what he went through, I could probably prove exactly what pushed him into this issue of heart problems and this blood vessel issue that he had going on with some of these factors that I run on blood work. This is a big issue with patients and I'm amazed at how many people are being exposed to this, having just respiratory symptoms, you know, sinus symptoms, pounding antibiotics and steroids for what seems to be something else when it's the underlying issue is the mold. I've heard of popular builders in the area. One popular builder has got a patient or a person in a gag order due to a mold issue and bought back like a $500,000 house because of all the health issues this lady's having. So if you think this stuff's not much of an issue, I promise you this is a real issue. <clears throat> we still have some of our record protocols on YouTube. I'll, I'll give some protocols throughout the lecture, not too much. We don't want patients treating themselves. My Instagram stuff, I'll go over some things as well. We're still, still doing the stem cell shots at the office. Getting great results with that. Here are my kids, Ethan Jackson, four and two, more recent picture of them. I was telling you guys that, you know, I had some personal things that popped up. I took my lecture off in January to really focus on this topic. These are the last good pictures I have with my dad and my children. I lost my dad in December. He uh, was putting up Christmas lights the Saturday before Thanksgiving. He fell from a ladder, hit his head, had a severe brain bleed that required emergency brain surgery and was in a coma from the fall, a coma from the surgery. It came down to making a quality of life decision for him and he passed December 6th, unfortunately. My next lecture will be dedicated specifically for my dad and he'll be missed greatly. <clears throat> I base a lot of this book on uh, Dr. Shoemaker's protocols and you know a lot of you know his information. I'm not Dr. Shoemaker certified. I'm not prescribing medications. I'll explain further when I get into uh, deeper in the lecture, but Dr. Shoemaker's the godfather um, when it comes to mold stuff. Follow up book that uh, these nurses wrote, Mold Illness, Surviving and Thriving, was a very, very good book. Um, it helped me put a lot of this together as well. The biotoxin pathway, not that you need to know all of this. If the people that really want the analytical stuff, Dr. Shoemaker, in his book, he has the biotoxin pathway. I went over the mold summit over the winter months. This was a great summit, a lot of great speakers, a lot of physicians who dealt with mold problems and a lot of physicians who were permanently damaged from mold. There's patients that cannot permanently or get back what they lost. Sometimes you inspire patients and other times patients inspire you. This patient inspired me to really tackle this topic a little bit more in depth. I've been really intrigued with this over the years, but she really intrigued me enough to really tackle this a little bit more head on. I can't go in depth with her case and tell you 100% of her case. She's here tonight with us in this room and she's still in and out of court with this company that most of you guys use for a cell phone carrier. She was exposed to a bunch of molds in a building that she worked with with this company. Tremendous amount of health issues over the years. A lot of other individuals working in this building had health issues. She started off with a doctor in Royal Oak to start treating this mold stuff, who doesn't practice anymore. Went to Dr. Shoemaker 
to even working with Dr. Johanna in New York, coming back to Michigan and further pursuing her health and getting over this stuff with doctors in Michigan. And I'm one of them treating some of her co-infections. She presented at the office, chronic fatigue, history of the model. She's got the fun insulin resistant number, um, numbers that I have dealt with. Um, she was just in today. Her numbers look a lot better, especially her triglycerides with what she's been doing. Simple, simple stuff. Everyone gets tripped up on the whole cholesterol factor and gets very scared with it. Mold exacerbates everything. Creates a lot of inflammation in people. She had some of this chest pain issues, like this other patient that I showed you. And with these chest pain issues, I went after playing this whole enzyme stuff again. The enzymes seem to eliminate and take away her chest pain issues, but I'm looking at her heart factors. She had some slight inflammation of the C-reactive protein, but her other heart factors were perfectly fine. So it's just in, very intriguing how well specific enzyme treatment at a higher dose has been working for this inflammation issue that's produced by the mold. This is some of her follow-up blood work that she's had that has cleared her from her mold. I've done some of the copy and paste, and this is where I got my cheesy, basic, very, very basic blood panel of mold for 60 bucks through LabCorp just to check patients with, and I'm just between my $60 blood panel, checking people's symptoms and having mold companies checking out, I've nailed about 85% of these cases just like that. Everyone wants to run these expensive panels on people and run massive amount of lab work. I'm the Robin Hood of functional medicine. I steal from the rich and give to the poor. I can't cheapen this stuff up anymore if I tried to. She had Epstein-Barr issues and other viral issues. Mold makes everything else worse in the body. Flares up all your little co-infections. You see some of our other parvo and other viral issues going on. We're working on some heavy metal issues with her, so mold could create brain fog on patients. Mercury issues, which was up on her, could create brain fog issues as well. She has a little bit of a weaker digestion going on, needs a little bit more hydrochloric acid to help push everything else in that other direction. I'm not gonna dive too heavy into the heavy metal issues, but I do have a lecture on YouTube with heavy metals if you are interested in that. And after this lecture, I'll be pursuing a little bit more of a different analysis on top of the regular hair analysis that we're doing to look at this metal issue, the Quicksilver Tri-Test. Mycotoxin illness is real. Mold, is mold the root cause of your mystery symptoms and unresolved anxiety? So mycotoxins are the chemicals released from molds. So you got molds that release spores. From the spores come the mycotoxins and that's where your problems come. Now, this patient I was telling you about that inspired me, in this building that she worked in, she said, everyone is popping Xanax like crazy. This mold is creating anxiety on everyone, and everyone is popping Xanax like crazy. Psychiatric conditions possibly related or exacerbated by mold, anxiety, depression, depersonalization, cognitive impairment, mood swings. Now, this lady's got a lot on her plate in general, and they could say, oh, you got a lot of life circumstances going on, mold's not your problem. Constant rage, son had a horrible divorce and custody battle followed by a botched corrective surgery that made him dependent on drugs, he killed himself. She's got a lot going on. <clears throat> Scared me to the point that she's trying to keep my eye on her as much because I thought she was gonna go down that route. I want you to see some of the, you know, she was talking about some symptoms and I'm just on this whole mold topic and talking about some old house that she was lived in originally that had a, a pool in the house and there was mold from the humidity in the house because of this pool. I ran a panel on her, small, cheap panel, elevated. She checked out her house, her current house, her old house had the mold, but her new house, newer house had the mold as well. Look at her symptoms, brain fog, mental confusion, depression, confusion with lost feeling, uh, feeling like I'm going crazy, short-term and long-term memory problems. Three types of molds were confirmed in her house. This is a little bit of her report. 
Chetomium, um, Stachybotrys, and uh, it was the Aspergillus penicillium markers that were of mold that were on uh, in her home. So these mold things were making her feel like she was absolutely going crazy. They got a, you know, a term, sick building syndrome. Now when school starts with these children, two, three weeks in the school, and all these kids have these sinus and respiratory issues and get sick right off the bat. Do you think some of these schools are soaked with mold? Absolutely guarantee you that. I had a second grade teacher, and I was telling you guys, I think at the last lecture too, second grade, she goes, of 30 children, six of them are on anti-anxiety medication. Second grade. So what is sick building syndrome? Sore eyes, feeling of suffocation, dry, sore throat, coughing, um, backache, intermittent fatigue, dizziness, sleepiness, psoriasis, other skin issues, nausea, palpitations. So if you're being exposed to mold, you may have symptoms like this within the building. What's the next thing, one of the next things that you could look at? The VCS test, vcstest.com. Take a picture of this slide. VCS test is a measure of one of the neurological functions of vision known as contrast. Biotoxins impair this within 24 to 36 hours after exposure. You will fail this test if you are being exposed to mold. BCSTest.com, you could do this test for free on a computer to see if you fail this test or not. Now, this is a report of, this is a report of what it'll look like if you fail. Other things, other than the biotoxins, which will make you fail this, nutritional deficiencies, alcohol issues, drug and certain medications, VOCs, volatile organic compounds, heavy metal issues will make people fail this test. I got a lady right now, she works at the Detroit airport. She got all the symptoms of mold. She's got, she failed this test. I had her do the Petri dish test. She even brought it to the office. I was the one monitoring it to see if something was going to grow. Nothing grew on it. So I'm so confused. I'm like, my gosh, you have everything going on that screams mold to me. And I swear it was the volatile organic compounds from paint because they just painted the place up that made her fail the eye test and exacerbated her breathing issues. Now we've got a story. Our office has a story. Another reason why I want to kind of talk about this and go into this with this lecture. This is an older picture of our crew at our old office. We moved across the street, 10 mile, to our newer building. A little bit of a, literally a facelift. This was a plastic surgeon's office, so this is literally a facelift. <laughs> but when they were working and redoing the roof of this building, Larry Moe and Curly did not contain this thing right. It rained all weekend. It flooded, it broke through that tarp and flooded our entire office. This corner, our corner office got hit the worst. It flooded one, two, three, I, three for sure it flooded. I don't know if it got further than that. Did it get further past years? Maybe it was the whole thing. It whacked, it whacked that whole building. This is some of the areas of us, you know, in our office, ripping up the wall, trying to dry everything out. We had inches of water drip. It just went everywhere. It was ridiculous. We pretty much threw out a lot of everything in our office. Now, that's our office. Here's another office. Here's another office. This patient that I'm going to talk about next works a few doors down. Very delightful family. Comes in history of non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, diagnosed with MTHFR, the Epstein-Barr factor, chronic fatigue, brain fog, hot flashes, pins and needles, pain in the uh, face and the arms, hives. 
A lot of patients with unexplained hives that it's a mold issue, surprisingly. I knew she was still working in our old building and I knew that they did not clean that water up as good as they should on her side. I told her, out of my curiosity, I'm going to pay for you to have a mold panel ran because I know there's mold in that building and I want to see what your factors look like, especially with some of the symptoms that you're having. Her factors came back elevated and I guarantee you there is mold in that building she's working at. In 2011, the National Institute for Occupational Safety and Health published their opinion that suggested as many as 50% of U.S. buildings are water damaged. A mere 48 hours of damp, uh, dampness from a minor leak or water intrusion is enough to make carpet, drywall, furniture, or other porous surfaces prone to mold. So if you have a leak, let's say this building is soaked with mold, and I know it's not because my patient in this room, after 10 minutes of being exposed to mold, would start getting a very raspy voice. And her niece, which is one of our back girls, is a hound dog to smelling mold, could pinpoint this stuff on any patient walking in with this stuff. And it's very impressive. 25% of everyone in this room will be susceptible genetically to mold because this HLA-DR genetic factor, according to Dr. Shoemaker. Now, if you followed my lectures over the years, you've seen that I've kind of got interested in this whole mold thing. I started having patients do some petri dish testing. All these patients with these crappy sinus issues, crappy respiratory issues, having a hard time getting over this stuff. I started having people doing this, this a simple petri dish mold test to see what I could find. One of the worst ones I have found, and this is my California Skype patient, this is what she grew on her plates in her house. Now, she's 63 years old, diagnosed with asthma, symptoms manageable until she came in contact with the West Nile virus, things flared up. I've been treating her over Skype. She decided to make a visit to her office over the summer. I believe that was last summer. It's nice to kind of see some faces once in a while. I took a picture of her lungs while she was in the office. You can see she's got the long, deep, dark lungs. That's pretty common with, like, with uh, uh, emphysema, COPD-based lungs. We ran a mold panel on her, my cheap blood panel. This is her factors elevated. It's confirmed. It's all in her house. She cannot move. She's not in a position to move. Remediation is expensive. You got options. If you find this stuff, it's confirmed. You could either remediate, you can move, um, or you somehow have to create a safe home with HEPA-based air filters and work with nutraceuticals and different binders or whatnot. And I'm managing her pretty decent considering her circumstances. So what is mold? Mold is a type of fungus that often looks fuzzy, uh, looks like fuzzy spots or uh, different colors, including green, gray, or black. More than 100,000 mold species have been identified. There's different types. So right now it's raining a lot outside. You're going to get more people who have allergies to molds. There's the allergenic issue with the molds, pathogenic issues where people who uh, are pathogenic that can cause infection and people who are immune compromised. Tonight's lecture, I'm more going to go base with a toxic component, toxic to all humans and animals who come in contact with it. There's about seven different species of toxic molds. Stachybatris, Penicillium, Aspergillus, Chetomium, Fusarium, Wallemia, Alternaria are some of the other ones that are the, uh, the main ones people react with. They're, is that the only? amount? No, I've got patients, you know, there's other molds that patients could still react with those, but those are the top main ones. And stachybotrys, that's your typical black mold that everyone talks about. So you got mold. Mold releases spores. From the spores, it releases tiny chemicals called mycotoxins. These are what creates the problems in patients. Chemical compounds pr uh, produced by both molds and yeast function as a protective mechanism environment 
in which uh, fungi live uh, influences the output of mycotoxins. So what happens? You are exposed to these mycotoxins and they create inflammation in the body because it activates these cytokines and these cytokines continue to create inflammation and people have different symptoms based on these inflammation factors and this is why some of my patients that I'm treating, the enzyme treatments seem to help out quite a bit with them. What are biotoxins? Biotoxins are produced by living organisms and can be found in water damaged buildings, ticks and brown recluse spiders and contaminated tropical fish. 80% of serious patients are ill uh, because of their exposure to water damaged buildings. What is Sears? Patients exposed to biotoxins which activate chronic inflammation within the body. So I told you about the blood panel, my cheap little blood panel, if I want to get a little bit more thorough and actually look at the specific mycotoxins in patients that are being exposed to mold, I will run a GPL mycotoxic test. This is a urine-based test. This is through Great Plains Laboratory, it runs about $2.99, and it gives me more specific insight to what you're being exposed to. The advantages to running this, Mycotox screens for 11 different mycotoxins from 40 species of mold in one urine sample. It's the most comprehensive and competitive, competitively priced mycotoxic test available. This is what a sample one looks like. So from your different species of molds, you got the subset of mycotoxins, penicillium, stachybotrys, aspergillus, and all the different ones. It's one half of this test. The other half, this is what you'll see. And I got a patient that just ran this last month. Her results just came in a few weeks. I just added this on a lecture. 54-year-old female. She lives or works in Milford. Sinus and chest congestion for three to six months. Possible mold exposure at old yoga studio. If you have done yoga in Milford, you may have been at her studio. She got out of that building, but they still never took care of the damage with the mold. Her factors, I, this is down below, I wish I had the color version of this, but fusarium came back elevated, and the uh, fancy Z word with the uh, mycotoxin was up and out of range. So we're working with her. She's doing good. I was, she was supposed to be here tonight as well, and uh, I don't see her. So let's keep jumping around. These are different types of mycotoxins. I was debating how deep I want to go with this lecture with all the different molds, all the different mycotoxins. If I turned this into a biology class and jumped into every single thing, every species I'd bore the crap out of everyone so I just want to really bring this to light and show you cases if I get a lot of good feedback on this lecture I'll do a part two and maybe go a bit more in depth with each one of these how mycotoxins enter the body ingestion inhalation and absorption obviously your sinus and your throat are these are some of the areas that are going to be affected first and foremost with most patients Red, itchy, watery eyes, itchy ears, buzzing sounds, sneezing, congestion, runny nose, itchy or sore throat, post-nasal drip, patients that have chronic bloodshot eyes that just are unexplained, a lot of that is a mold issue. Since I've been working on this lecture, I've had patients coming to me wanting the mold thing ran. This is a 60-year-old lady in her mid-60s, interested in running the mold panel, struggling with shortness of breath, uh, chest pressure, difficulty breathing. She's been a long-term patient, got brain fog issues. She had pneumonia. She's like, something's going on. I don't know what's going on. I've been a patient for you guys long-term, been doing a lot of supplements, healthy over the years. Something's making me sick. I'm not feeling right. So I decided to run a panel on her. Her factors were elevated. She rent, was renting a house is it like Gross Point or something, I believe. Older house. Like I said, it's a cheap panel. She still confirmed it within the house. 
she was renting the house. She's like, I'm done, she moved out. Between moving out and the supplements, she's doing a lot better. Now, I want you guys to take a picture of this next slide, top mold exposure symptoms. Fatigue, weakness, headaches, light sensitivity, poor memory, hard time finding words, difficulty concentrating, morning stiffness, joint pain, shortness of breath. The interesting one was the static shocks, people giving static shocks all the time. <clears throat> so, first is, if you have mold symptoms and you fall in this category, that's one thing. Where are we going to go next? bcstest.com is secondary. If you fail that test, we've got some investigation to do. Once you got the symptoms, you fail the test, I'm either going to run my cheap mold blood panel or I'm going to do my more expensive urine mycotoxic test. If you, I confirm things through that, I've got to source this now. I'm going to use my Mold Pro people, our Green Home Solutions, and I'm going to try to source where this is at exactly coming from. You're either going to move, you're going to remediate, or you're going to somehow create a safe zone. And from there, I'm going to treat the patient. If you light up these factors with mold, and I'm trying to treat patients, whether you're doing um, shoemakers protocol with binders, you will not get better if you're continually being exposed to this mold. Shoemaker is going to do things a little different. He's going to get your mold symptoms. If you fail the VCS test, he's going to run your blood genetic markers with the HLA DR genetic factor. Then he's going to run a very extensive and expensive cytokine based panel with you and put you on cholesterol lowering medication, which are binders, the CSM cholestyramine or the well call medication. Some people like their medications, I understand. Some people are chronically sick because of their medications. If you want your medications, I've got no problem with that. See a shoemaker protocol doctor. I'm not prescribing medications and I'm getting patients better doing what I'm doing. But key thing is you gotta get away from the mold if you wanna improve. Here's some commonly misdiagnosed issues with patients who are exposed to mold, the chronic fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue syndrome. You've got IBS, multiple chemical sensitivity, stress, depression, anxiety. Here's some at-risk environments. You know, you'll see that your common churches, schools, certain workplaces, flat top buildings are key areas. At risk hobbies, historic restoration, brewmaster, bread maker, cheese experts, rare book collector, thrift shop workers, hoarders. I've got a patient. I got a patient. Her parents who passed away were a bit of hoarders. She took all their crap and put it in their basement. It was soaked with mold and it got her house full of mold because of the crap that they hoard that she decided to put in her basement. It's fun being a detective and really going after this stuff and trying to source it and get patients better at the same time. You're fighting an invisible enemy. Mold can exist undetected because most often you cannot see or smell it. Mold feeds off of carbohydrate rich material, the drywall, plywood, subfloor, carpet, cardboard, cork, uh, particle board, dust and cement. Dust feeds mold. When we're threatened, it releases the spores. The spores release chemicals, which are the mycotoxins, which create the problems for most patients. Keep in mind these mold effects, interactions with Lyme disease and viral infections, multiple chemical sensitivities, a lot of these patients have EMF problems, food sensitivities, autoimmunity. Mold makes everything else worse. This is you. 
47-year-old female patient with a history of uh, Epstein-Barr doing two years straight with antibiotics. This patient had a port in her chest doing antibiotics treating Lyme issue. Her house was had mold issues that she thought the previous couple fixed and remediated properly. They moved out. They had health issues. When they moved out, their health got better. She was tackling her health with chronic infections like Epstein-Barr and Lyme when the problem was she was being exposed to mold. Her factors came back through the roof. She checked out her house again. When she checked out her house, the mold was never fully gone. Now, this next case, I've just taken back. This lady was in, she's in her late 30s. She was in last, it was August. This was August when she first came in with this appointment. Past two months, very sick. Symptoms of cough, constant tickle, coughing jags, sore throat, fever, sinus drainage, green. She had Epstein-Barr issues. She's always been a viral patient. Something told me that I needed to go in the direction of running a mole panel on her. I told her, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to run a mole panel with you. you got certain symptoms going on that scream something more than just this whole Epstein-Barr factor. And you can see she lit up the factors down below. I told her, you're, you're for my cheap, crappy blood work that isn't that extensive, I think you need to run, you know, have someone come check out your house for a mole. She goes, the house was built in 2001. The basement's bone dry. We clean it all the time. We have a cleaning person, this and that. She's like, I would be shocked if there's anything even in my house. This was the plywood that was pulled. And you can't see it that good on this slide, but they had to replace it down below. This was behind the wall. They had a, a window leak in 2012 that they thought was replaced properly. This window kept leaking down below and hitting this plywood and mold was growing behind it. You could not visibly see any mold in this bedroom, period. This bedroom was the bedroom of her two children who were three and five years old. She said they have been sick since the day they've been born, and she didn't know what the heck was going on. She almost lost one of her children due to a placental eruption that possibly could have been from mold exposure, that whole anti-cariolipin factor. Can I ask a quick question? How did they find that? Like, Great question. So when those factors previously came back high and she had those symptoms. I used Green Home Solutions for her. I go, I want your house checked out. They were the ones who pinpoint something's up with this room. We need to figure it out. And they were able to rip out that wood and bingo, found it. She also sees a very reputable, very well-known doctor group out in West Bloomfield that was very, very impressed with this. We share this patient that was very impressed with what I found and how I found it on her and with the health issues with her children. He said, he saved your life. It was pretty cool. That's a nice compliment. This was the panel that came back from Green Home Solutions. Pithomyces was the highest one, but she also had the penicillium aspergillus group that was elevated on that as well. The penicillium aspergillus group is a common one that pops up. This is also part of Green Home Solutions in their panel. If you want to take a quick picture of that, this will also be on the YouTube stuff that you could pause it when you want to. Penicillin is an antibiotic produced from the mold penicillium. Gosh, my childhood was penicillin, antibiotics, earaches and strep throat, earaches and strep throat grown up my entire life. My children will never see that direction knowing what I know. 
milk and ice cream, feeding those infections, antibiotic after antibiotic. I bring this up because when you're going after these mold patients, every, a lot of them get these respiratory issues, sinus issues, and they're being pounded full of steroids and antibiotics, which are in, gonna increase candida issues in the body. And when addressing and looking at this mold factor, you gotta look at the candida antigens with a lot of these patients as well. I just thought this little history thing was a little bit interesting about uh, the discovery of penicillin and uh, Fleming noticed that a petri dish containing stack, staph bacteria that uh, had been mistakenly uh, left open by, uh, was contaminated by blue-green algae mold from an open window and it formed a halo around it. And then it's the chemicals that was released from the mold that how they found that it had antibacterial properties to it. I just thought a little bit of the history of that was interesting. Came across an old picture as well. Penicillin cures gonorrhea in four hours. Do we have any hands to confirm that? <laughs> asking for a friend, asking for a friend. Now I do not promote any one group as far as the mold stuff goes. I've used Green Home Solutions. I've used mold pro in michigan if i'm going to give it an edge to one over the other john from mold pro really knows his stuff when it comes to this he does a very cool dry ice blasting to kill this stuff hi my name is john dubois owner and project manager at mold pro i want to take a moment to explain to you our newest mold remediation technique incorporated here at mold pro called dry ice blasting. We're the very first in Southeast Michigan to offer this technology as a form of mold remediation. Dry ice blasting is a safer, healthier, and a more efficient way to remediate mold from your home or place of business. Let me take a moment to explain this process to you. Dry ice blasting has been used in other businesses for many years. However, it is relatively new to the mold remediation industry. The actual procedure of dry ice blasting begins before the process even starts. Mold Pro strives to not only remove your mold, but also make sure it never returns. That being said, our first step is to seek out what caused the mold in the first place. As a Michigan licensed builder, I am authorized to make structural determinations that may concern your home. This could include reconstruction on walls or adding inventing in your attic to ensure that the mold never returns. We remove mold infected materials only when necessary that do not affect the structural integrity of the home. Once the root cause is assessed and a solution is determined, we begin the dry ice blasting process. The setup is relatively easy and usually only requires a two to three man team. Our machines are positioned conveniently and kept out of the way of your home or business. The actual blaster works by shooting out dry ice pellets at roughly 700 miles per hour which will shear off the mold from where it has taken hold. Dry ice blasting removes the visible mold as well as the mold root. If the mold root is left or simply covered, it can regrow with just a small amount of humidity or moisture. From there, our removal team will enter any infected area and proceed to remove the mold through the dry ice blasting technique. As you can see, the mold is literally stripped from the wood, which leaves it clean and will give the wood a fresh and almost new finish. The actual dry ice is a natural product that occurs in the atmosphere, so there are no dangerous or unhealthy chemicals that are used in the process. By using the blaster, we are able to remove the mold, which allow you and those around you to have peace of mind. In the past, other mold removal procedures involved simply fogging an attic and covering up the mold with a sealant, which, while an option, still leaves the mold in the home, which could eventually grow back and cause further mold issues in the future. With dry ice blasting, we remove the mold so it is a one-time transaction and we will not simply paint over your problems. Mold Pro strives to make your mold removal process as easy as possible. This is a benefit for you as a home or business owner as we know your time is valuable. At Mold Pro, we continue to further educate ourselves to be at the forefront of the mold removal industry. We are twice certified by the National Association of Mold Professionals as well as the Institute of Inspection, Cleaning, and Restoration Certification. We ascribe to the IICRC Mold Remediation Standards, which is the most current and thorough standard procedure in use today for mold remediation. We also take into account that every mold case is different. 
unlike other mold companies that use just one technique for every situation, we know that many mold problems are not the same and require a different approach to remediate your mold. We determine the technique that works best for you. Dry ice blasting is one of those techniques. Mold can be a very harmful issue if not addressed correctly and promptly. If not thoroughly removed, mold can cause residual harm or even lasting health issues. Mold Pro wants to make sure your mold remediation goes safely and efficiently, but most importantly, through dry ice blasting, everyone within your home or place of business can rest assured knowing that they are living or working in a safer and healthier environment. This is a patient that we are sharing. Patient, 46 year old female, presents with burning in her lungs. I took a chest x ray, everything was normal with that. She was ripping up some of her carpet in her bedroom and finding all this black stuff on the bottom of it. We had Mold Pro come out to them, check out the, this carpet insulation stuff, and you could see her factors were super, super elevated. In the basement sample, there was more problems in the basement than in that bedroom. We were suspecting possibly the previous owners were growing marijuana in the basement that created mold in the house. She's in this crowd tonight and she's actually doing very well. This is a patient, she was living in government HUD housing. She's kind of stuck and can't get out of what she's doing. She comes in feeling very viral, um, muscle spasms, rashes, nerve sensations, body aches, fatigue, shortness of breath, chills, headaches. She has the MTHFR mutation. This deals with detoxification. If people have that mutation, you gotta really address the detoxification pathway because if you're using binders and binding mold with patients and they're not detoxifying, they're still gonna have issues if you don't work with that liver pathway. Another doctor ran a few different um, cytokine markers that are elevated with some patients with mold and you know, I ran my mold panel with her. She had elevated factors for me to say, you know, she it can't have a mold company come in this HUD housing thing is a government owned thing. So she started doing Petri dish testing and this is the funky stuff that she started growing on hers. I'll have some patients got mold.com. You could do some of these Petri dish things and send it out to them to have them culture what you're actually growing as well. gotmold.com uh, gotmold.com yes you're absolutely right yes and it, there's and if someone's being exposed to things I'm seeing things on the blood and mainly that urine based test I'm still suspecting things I'm going to have someone check it out for sure And this was a patient, and this was also working with Green Home Solutions. She lives out in the South Line, Brighton area. Breathing issues. Now this house, she was the only one, one of five affected by the mold. She just had shortness of breath issues, chest pain, problems going on. I ran her factors, cheap, like I said, cheap, cheap panel, nothing crazy expensive. <clears throat> I said, I want someone to check out your house. They had a basement leak. It got through the whole HVAC system. It just went all throughout the house. We're working with her. She's slowly improving. This gentleman, mid 50s males, recurrent sinus infections. Recurrent sinus infections and persistent cough for three years. His panel, everything through the roof. I, we, you know, it doesn't matter if you're on antibiotics, steroids, nutraceuticals, you're not going to get over this crap if you're being exposed to mold on a regular basis. He had sinus and lung issues. I swear this stuff was making his wife go crazy. She had more of the issues with anxiety, the depression, the rage stuff. It's driving him nuts that she's going nuts from this stuff and his immune system was a complete mess from this. 
lot of these infections have biofilm components. A lot of your infections in the body have biofilm components. Biofilm is a slimy component that you need enzymes to break down so you could go after the actual pathogen within the body. I've worked with Dr. Thiel. Here's a little bit, shows a little bit of the cycle. I've worked with Dr. Thiel of Food Research to come up with a biofilm buster for my patients. I want to take the best of two products that I like, the Biocedin and Interphase Plus. I told them, here's the two I like. I want you to make a product based on that. And this is what he came up with. And these are the two that I have in the office. The one, the Interphase Plus has EDTA in it, which is a chelator. It's going to pull metals out of people. So I can't do that long, long term at high doses with patients where I could use my biofilm detox and go very aggressive with patients and not chelate metals and minerals out of people with that EDTA component to it. This patient's husband was actually in today. She's probably in late 50s, can't breathe, heaviness in the chest, or chest pressure, I should say. Uh, tired, uh, notice, uh, very, you know, very tired, hot, cold. She has history, I'm trying to remember if she had the Epstein-Barr factor on this one or not. She may have not. She didn't have a cough, but breathing issues to the point of going on an inhaler, not much change with the inhaler. Her heart rate, this was affecting her heart rate. Her heart kept diving down in the 40s. We ran a panel on her. She showed positive. We got her on some stuff. Her husband was in today. She's actually doing pretty well. This was another case I worked with uh, Green Home Solutions with. And this patient, 53-year-old lady, chronic wet cough, drainage, feels chest congestion going on, no wheezing, bright ear discomfort. Her thyroid kind of was going up and down with this. And some of the stuff could affect thyroid issues or further exacerbate autoimmune conditions in patients. Green Home Solutions said, yeah, there's stuff that's high but may not be high enough for you to have health problems with it. But if you are having health problems with it, we could probably try doing something. She responded with the supplements and things I was doing with her. We never had to do any remediation or anything like that with her. She never had to move or anything. You could see some of her factors. They weren't super elevated with her. And getting back to everyone doing the antibiotics and steroids, the antibiotics and steroids for the sinus, chest, issue. This feeds the candida factors. Birth control, hormone replacement therapy, <clears throat> antibiotics, steroids, hepatitis B shots will feed candida issues in the body. You got to be very vigilant when you're going after this stuff. Now we have these problems in the hospital. Deadly germs loss cures a mysterious, mysterious infection spanning the globe in a climate of secrecy. Recently, <clears throat> Candia Aris re uh, reached New York City, New Jersey, and Illinois, leading the federal, uh, the CDC in prevention, or in prevention to add it to the list of germs deemed urgent. So you go to the hospital aspect of this. You got MRSA issues. You got C. diff. You got infections that lead people to sepsis. Now you got this Candia Aris. You got catheterized infections. You got these super bug infections. I tell you, the last place you want to be dealing with your health, if you have to be, is in a hospital. Now you got this stuff floating around. I got two very intriguing patients I'm working with that this mold is creating vertigo issues with them. The first case I'm going to talk about this girl's only in her mid to late, she's about mid 20s. <clears throat> I've been working with her forever for this stuff. Zero change with anxiety. She's got the anxiety, depression issue with this, the dizzy episodes. I worked with her adrenal glands. I've adjusted her atlas. We've gone after any and everything with her. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to run a mold panel with you. Lights up this mold panel. She's been a neurologist. They can't figure her out. Come to find out their rental house is soaked with the mold and it's a contributing factor to what's going on with her vertigo. Got another patient, same thing, vertigo issues. She was, I think she was 23, 23. Diagnosed vertigo, dizziness on and off, balance, feels like she's moving when she's not. Symptoms come and go, having daily episodes. 
went after her atlas, treated her adrenals because her blood pressure was dropping from sitting and standing. But even that, you know, she improved some. Still going on. Ran the mole panel with her. Hers were elevated. And what was interesting, you know, and she, she failed the VCS test as well. She did send me pictures. She grew some funky petri dish stuff as well. We're working with her to get her to turn a corner, but it's just very intriguing the different symptoms that patients present. It's not always the common respiratory issue or lung congestion problems that um, people may think. The turmeric forte has been phenomenal. Been having a great time using this with, this with patients. If you had the elevated C-reactive protein with the inflammation marker, this has been working phenomenal. If you had the elevated lipoprotein A issue, the curcumin in the turmeric works with lowering that lipoprotein A and keeping that inflammation marker down. Anti-Alzheimer's, anti-cancer. This has been a phenomenal thing for patients. How far back does you know remediating mold go? Mold go goes back to the Bible, Leviticus 14:33-57. It is talks about mold remediation. I thought that was very intriguing. I like to give people encouragement since we're going to talk about some biblical things. Philippians 3:13. I forget what is behind and I struggle for what is ahead. Don't give up in life. A lot of people are on YouTube watching these videos. You guys are here searching for health answers. A lot of people have issues going on in their life with their health, their family. Someone has showed us the way. Someone's ahead of you that's going to help you out. You're ahead of someone else. You help them out. We're all in life together. So let's put it all together. So where do you start? The mold symptom survey form. That first slide, the mold symptoms, is pretty much the mold symptom survey form. If you have mold symptoms, you then do the VCS test to see if you fail that or not. If you fail the VCS test, I'm either gonna run that mold blood panel which I'm gonna change. I'm gonna change that mold panel around. It'll probably be right around the same price, but I'm still gonna I'm gonna rearrange that around a little bit. Or you could do the little bit more expensive mycotoxic urine test. I could ship these kits out of state to whatever state you're in. We use LabCorp. We could I check patients all around the US with my lab testing. If you fail those, you must source this stuff. Mold Pro, Green Home Solutions, if you live in Michigan, you remediate, you move, or you create a safe zone. You treat the patients, whether you want to go on the supplements or you want to go on the pharmaceutical binders, that's your call. But that is my direction going with patients. Now, there's some diets, a low mold diet that you'd want to follow along with this. A ketogenic diet has been phenomenal with a lot of patients. Dr. Shoemaker recommends a low amylose diet to it as well. And that is pretty much it. If you like what we do, follow us on Facebook. You could follow us on YouTube. You could catch our older protocols on YouTube Factor. We use food research, standard process, biotics research. We want to use the best of what's available to get you guys the best results. For patients ordering online, orders over 125 are free. I am still doing the A-lines. My previous lectures on YouTube are adding up now. Yeah. I appreciate you guys coming out tonight.